The story of the troubled couple, Eula's Vulcan Centaur and Sierra Space's Dream Chaser, is once again a hot topic, as Eula ended up ditching its partner to launch on its own in September. So, who will launch the space plane? Many eyes are currently on SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket, but some are opposed to this match due to technical issues. But is it true that Falcon can't launch Dream Chaser? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. The fact that ULA's Vulcan Centaur rocket will launch on its second certification without Sierra Space's Dream Chaser has made many people disappointed. Dream Chaser, or Mini Shuttle, is highly expected to be the perfect alternative for Boeing's troubling Starliner, which is currently stuck on the ISS. Last June, Sierra Space and NASA signed an unfunded Space Act agreement under the CCEC-2 initiative to focus primarily on the development of a crewed Dream Chaser and the Large Integrated Flexible Environment Life, Pathfinder module. CCSC-2 is part of NASA's effort to help foster commercial activities in Earth orbit as the space agency prepares for the decommissioning of the International Space Station in 2030. To prepare for that strategy, the cargo version, Tenacity, should fly first. And after several delays, the space plane finally targeted to fly for the first time at the end of this year, and the vehicle selected to launch Tenacity is ULA's Vulcan Centaur. However, EULA wants to launch in the fall to certify its rocket as soon as possible. Thus, they ended up skipping Dream Chaser and replacing it with a dummy payload. With the current situation, we do not know how much longer Dream's maiden launch will be delayed. The next launch window of Dream on Vulcan might be in CERT-3, but certainly Vulcan will spend that mission on the USSF's National Security Space Launch NSSL, contract. More notably, they have two missions, USSF-106 and USSF-87, that need to be performed this year. Currently, Delta IV Heavy has retired, and Atlas V has only 16 missions left, all of which have been planned, mostly involving Kuiper satellite launches and Starliner launches. Thus, Vulcan will be the main vehicle responsible for the USSF contract with a backlog of over 20 flights. The time for Phase 2 of the contract is running out, and ULA has just been selected for Phase 3. All of this reduces the opportunity for Dream Chaser to launch on Vulcan, potentially being delayed indefinitely if any issues arise. Not by chance, ULA decided to skip this customer and prioritize the other. Vulcan's primary purpose is to fulfill military contracts, and launching Dream is just a stepping stone to certifying the rocket. ULA and SpaceX are harshly competing with each other for the Pentagon's contracts. While SpaceX's Falcon Heavy is fully operational, ULA's new Vulcan rocket is not yet. To be able to perform national security missions, Vulcan needs to make two successful launches, with the first one coming in January. Unfortunately, there is an overlap in the schedule of the two parties, since ULA aims at the October launch date while Sierra is ready by the end of 2024. Vulcan itself has delayed the military missions for many years, and the bitter result is they hit a financial fine in May, so a launch as soon as possible is essential. Additionally, the Pentagon is ULA's most important customer. So, while the military may not be paying for CERT II directly, the backlog of NSSL orders is why ULA is willing to pay out of pocket to launch the mission. Last but not least, Vulcan's successful launches this year will determine the value of ULA in the deal with Blue Origin. Although being a cash cow for Boeing, ULA has suffered significant losses in recent years, forcing its parent company to sell it to cut losses. The billionaire Jeff Bezos has eyed ULA as a potential gold mine, and by the successful Vulcan project, Yella and Blue Origin would quickly close a deal. For Sierra Space, although they seem to suffer loss in this affair, on the optimistic side, it may be time for a different and better direction. SpaceX the pair of Dream Chaser and SpaceX Falcon will definitely be a great combination in spaceflight. This mini shuttle owns state-of-the-art technologies, such as the only commercial runway-capable space plane, high reusability and flexibility, and most notably, compatibility with all launch vehicles. Tenacity is compatible with a wide variety of launch vehicles, rockets, and will be launched in a stowed configuration inside a payload fairing. This makes Tenacity significantly more flexible and reduces ascent loads on the vehicle compared to the Space Shuttle. Falcon, especially Falcon 9, has established itself as the most frequently launched rocket in 2024, achieving an impressive record of 69 launches, surpassing previous records set by other rocket families. 
This remarkable performance underscores its reliability, with a success rate of 99.18% since its debut in 2010, having completed 364 launches with only three failures and one partial failure. On the other hand, some doubt about the technical challenge to integrate both vehicles. As you know, the fully stacked Dream Chaser has 13.6 meters high, larger a little bit than the fairing of Falcon 9 and even Falcon Heavy. Additionally, the cargo Dream Chaser will have folding wings and fit within a 5-meter diameter payload fairing, while the Falcon's fairing is 5.2 meters in diameter. So does that mean the idea of launching Dream Chaser on a Falcon is completely out of the question? Well, not really. While the cargo version, Tenacity, will need a protective shell like the payload fairing to avoid damage from debris, Sierra Space's DC-200 crewed space plane variant will be launched in a similar configuration, but without a fairing. For that reason, in my opinion, the most viable option is to launch Tenacity on another vehicle instead of SpaceX's Falcon, if ULA's rocket is not available. We have Blue Origin's New Glenn, whose first launch is expected to take place no earlier than September 29, 2024. New Glenn's baseline payload fairing is 7 meters in diameter and 21.9 meters tall, which is much larger than Falcon. In the future, following the success of the cargo version, the crew Dream Chaser spacecraft will be considered for launch on SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. Although this combination seems to be slightly later, at least there will be a possibility, or when Starship comes into operation, we will witness the new collaboration between the largest vehicle ever built and Sierra Space's tenacity. No doubt a lot of exciting things are going to happen as SpaceX and other startups really innovate, and the cooperation between them will create a revolution, leaving old space behind. However, in specialized fields like rocketry, where experience is considered the backbone, we cannot move quickly and sustainably without learning from our predecessors, and Dream Chaser is not exceptional. Dream Chaser's design is derived from NASA's HL-20 Personnel Launch System. HL means horizontal landing. The system was a NASA space plane concept for crewed orbital missions studied by NASA's Langley Research Center around 1990. It was envisaged as a lifting body re-entry vehicle similar to the space plane design of the Soviet Bior 4 Its stated goals were to achieve low operational costs, improved flight safety, and a possibility of landing on conventional runways. The PLS concept space plane was designed as a complement to the space shuttle and was considered an addition to the crewed launch capability of the United States. Unfortunately, it was never approved for development, and thus, Sierra Space leveraged this opportunity with the goal of bringing NASA's exciting idea from the dead. Like PLS, Dream Chaser would be a small, compact vehicle due to removing large payload carrying requirements from personnel delivery missions. PLS has an overall length of about 8.8 .8 meters and a wingspan of 7.2 meters, while these numbers for Dream are 9 meters and 7 meters, 4.5 meters with folded wings, respectively. It can be said that Dream Chaser's dimensions are within inches of that of the HL-20. The Mini Shuttle has imitated PLS in terms of reusability features, as well as subsystem simplification and an aircraft approach on ground and flight operations. This can also greatly lower the costs of operating Dream. However, Dream Chaser isn't just the fruit of 20th century research, and 21st century scientists are looking to reinvent the wheel. As a result, we now have a vehicle that is touted as highly versatile and highly functional. The U.S. government agencies have shown interest in space vehicles to supplement traditional air, land, and surface transportation modes. The Dream Chaser will also support non-combat activities like humanitarian relief operations and medical missions. With the addition of a robotic arm, the Dream Chaser has the potential to boost satellites to a higher orbit or pull them out of orbit and potentially make repairs. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.